Hello, Christ is in our midst. I'm Father Kevin Long of St. Elias Antiochian Orthodox Church in Newcastle, Pennsylvania. Today is Sunday, November 15th, 2020, and here are the readings for today. The first reading is from St. Paul's letter to the Ephesians, chapter 2, verses 4 through 10. Brethren, God, who is rich in mercy out of the great love with which he loved us, even though we were dead through our trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved and raised us up with him, and made us sit with him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus, that in the coming ages he might show the immeasurable riches of his grace and kindness towards us in Christ Jesus. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not of your own doing, it is the gift of God, not because of works, lest any man should boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. And the Gospel reading today is from the Gospel of St. Luke, chapter 10, verses 25 through 37. At that time, a lawyer stood up to put Jesus to the test, saying, Teacher, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? He said to him, What is written in the law? How do you read? And he answered, You shall love the Lord your God with your heart and with all your soul, and with all your strength, and with all your mind, and your neighbor as yourself. And he said to him, You have answered right. Do this, and you will live. But he, desiring to justify himself, said to Jesus, And who is my neighbor? And Jesus replied, A man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho, and he fell among robbers, who stripped him and beat him and departed, leaving him half dead. Now by chance a priest was going down that road, and when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. So likewise a Levite, when he came to the place and saw him, passed by on the other side. But a Samaritan, as he journeyed, came to where he was. And when he saw him, he had compassion, and went to him and bound up his wounds, pouring on oil and wine. And then he set him on his own beast and brought him to an inn, and took care of him. And the next day he took out two denarii and gave them to the innkeeper, saying, Take care of him, and whatever more you spend, I will repay when I come back. Which of these three do you think proved neighbor to the man who fell among the robbers? And he said, The one who showed mercy on him. And Jesus said, Go and do likewise. You know, in American culture, there's a great debate between you know, the so-called faith righteousness and works righteousness. And on the other hand, the um, idea of, of gr salvation through faith and through grace. It's a great matter of, um, amongst Protestants anyway, it's a great controversy, a great argument that ensues. And there are numerous people who say over and over again that your works will not save you, that, um, that the only thing that will save you is belief in Jesus Christ. And so it's in faith, and the, the grace that comes with faith is that which saves you. I think actually that's a bit of a fool's errand, and I'll explain why. We live in a culture that has abstracted that particular verse. Let me see if I can find it here. For grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not of your own doing. It is the gift of God, not because of worse works, lest any man should boast. And they stop right there. So it makes it sound like all you have to say is, I accept Jesus as my personal Lord and Savior on this very day, whenever day it is, and at this very time. You can write it in a book, in fact. I actually had a book. It said, right, right now, commit yourself to Jesus Christ, write down the date, write down the time, and you are saved forever. Well, okay. But the issue is, who are we once we have done that? And this is the great test and the great trial. It is important to recognize that we live in a world created by God. That God invented created, whatever word you want to use, the basic things that we have to get us through the day. He gave us oxygen so that we can breathe. He gave us light through the sun and through the moon and through things that we're able to invent on our own because he gave us brains to do this, that, that, that imitate the sun through the overhead lighting that we have in a room or a candle even that's lit. And so God is the bestower of all good things, and so it's really important for us to recognize that. And it's also important for us to recognize that through the cross, salvation has come to the world. Through his death, the 
Christ's death, through his time in Hades, through his resurrection from the dead, all are given the possibility of being in heaven eternally, free from sin, free from suffering, sorrow, and sighing, free from disease and war and malice and all of that stuff. And yes, we see that that comes through faith, not because we deserve it, but because it's a free gift, because God loves us so much. That's what grace is. Grace is the bestowing of a good gift, even though the receiver of that gift is really not worthy or may not be, or may be worthy. But that's not where it ends, and this is the problem. The problem is, how do we express our gratitude for what has been done? How do we live into Christ? How do we graft ourselves onto that great life-giving vine so that we bear witness to the salvation which has been given to us, which is promised to us through our faith and through the grace that is bestowed upon us through Christ Jesus. The answer is the sentence immediately following what I just read. I'll read that sentence again to put it in the proper context. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not of your own doing, it is a gift from God, not because of works lest any man should boast. The next sentence for we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. If we do not walk in the good works that Jesus Christ has laid out for us, then we don't bear witness to the reality of our salvation. If we don't bear the kinds of fruit that are of the nature of a Christian, if we do not show who we are through the way that we live, then we lie. We are making a lie out of what God has given us, and we have made a lie out of our saying that we have accepted Jesus Christ into our lives. We cannot be Christians who accept Jesus and then condemn our neighbor. We cannot be Christians who accept Jesus and they say person X is going to hell or person Y is going to hell. That's pharisaical and it's wrong. You want to know how to live? I'll tell you how to live. Look again at the gospel. There we have a man beaten by robbers going down the road from Jerusalem to Jericho. And two people, holy people, Levites and priests, they walk by on the other side, not wanting to get messy and having to deal with this person, not wanting to get involved, just staying on the other side, basically doing their own thing. And maybe they were right in so doing, maybe they were wrong in so doing, but whatever the case is, the, the poor man who is beaten by the thieves receives no mercy and no help from them. But who does he get help from? A Samaritan, a loathsome, despicable, hated Samaritan. Maybe even the man who was beaten by the robbers hates Samaritans. But I assure you, after the experience he has and being brought back to health and being taken care of, I suspect his view of Samaritans is slightly altered. And the Samaritan goes way beyond the extra mile. He completely changes his schedule. There's one thing that he cannot avoid, and so he goes and he takes care of it. But in taking care of it, he puts someone else in charge so that they make sure that the man is in good health. That is the life of a Christian. When we don't look and say, wait a minute, are you a card-carrying member of this church? Are you um, on my side or are you on my enemy's side? Do you agree with me or do you disagree with me? Are you a Republican or a Democrat? They don't care. Just go and minister. And that's what Christians do. God, do you think God cares if you're a Republican or a Democrat? Well, let me assure you he doesn't. Because each is equally worthy of praise, and each is worthy of the other thing. So the Samaritan goes and takes care of this poor man, giving money, time, attention, care, and compassion to this man so that he can be restored to health. 
That's what we are called to do because in showing that kind of mercy, that's exactly the same kind of mercy that God shows us through his willingness to die on the cross, to be buried, to suffer death, to go to Hades and destroy the gates of hell, and then again to rise triumphantly and deliver us into the heavenly kingdom. If God is willing to go through all this length, then who are we to do anything other than that? That is what it means to accept the free gift of grace through faith of the salvation that we are going to be given, to bear fruit and bear witness to the kinetic and kenotic self-emptying love of Jesus Christ that we are shown every day. So may God bless you and your family today and always in the name of the Father and the Son of the Holy Spirit, one God, amen. Christ is in our midst. Have a great day. God willing, we'll see you soon. And as a reminder for those Orthodox Christians, today begins the Nativity Fast. May God give you strength to endure this fast with great strength, and may it bring you closer to a, a spiritual and theological awareness of the reality of the Nativity and of the resurrection from the dead of our Lord Jesus Christ. Have a great day.